Hey guys, my name is Jeff. This is Films at Home. Thanks for checking out my channel. And as you can see, as promised, after a couple of weeks, we got a projector screen up. Really exciting. Finally hooked this up. So I wanna take you through sort of the install process of the screen, show you some demos of the projector actually playing, and give you a quick overview of kind of what my home theater looks like now because a lot of things have actually changed in terms of display, um, which is really exciting for me, but I wanna take you guys through it. And then as I go through and I spend some more time with the projector, uh, I'll be doing a full in-depth review of, of what I think of it and how it renders 4K um, and all that other stuff. But right now, just a quick update video because I finally do have this up and ready to go. I'll take you through everything new that I have. I'll show you some demos um, and that's be about it for today's video. So um, stay tuned for that and let's jump into it. So right now the room is a little bit of a mess because I just hung the projector screen up on my ceiling. Um, basically, as you can see, there are brackets back here and these two brackets are what holds this up. I drilled them up into the uh, ceiling joists. So they're right here, they're up into a, a stud in the ceiling. And then the screen from Elite Screens, this is a 92 inch, um, it has the tab tension. So these pieces in the side here, what they do is they keep the screen nice and tight. It's not just a typical drop down screen. Uh, it is electric, it is motorized, I'll show you that. Uh, but it's a 92 inch and it has a cine gray uh, backdrop. So it's not your typical white, it is actually a gray, which gives you better black levels. Um, it's better for um, sort of like lighter environments. As you can see, I've got windows here that bring in some light. I tried this projector screen and it looked uh, incredible with the Epson projector, um, even in daylight like this. A couple of the other things I still need to figure out, I had to move the subwoofer over, I had to move this speaker over. Right now my elevation speakers are just sitting here. Um, I'm gonna need to re-bracket them because the old bracket was behind where the current screen is. I'm gonna need to bracket them up here most likely, or I may just keep them here because I've had good experiences with them on top of the um, uh, side speakers. Uh, over here, all this remains the same. The center speaker sits right here. The screen actually comes down just about to the top of the center speaker. So it was perfect um, height spacing. That was really cool. Uh, and then same thing over here, had to move this speaker over, angled it in, as you can see, towards my chairs. Um, so it's angled towards me. And then the elevation speaker from SVS Sound, again, is on top for now while I calibrate that and figure out what I wanna do with it. The other quick adjustment I did was I, I moved my seats up a little bit. Um, so there's still, I, I watched the projector, there's still like decent space here between the, the screen and my seating. Like I said, this is only a 92 inch screen, so it's nothing crazy. It looks huge in this room, but with this seating distance, it doesn't actually look too, too bad. Um, and what I did now, this is kind of jerry-rigged, uh, but I, I, I have a stand back here for the projector. So I am gonna put the projector in between the seats uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to get a better system for back here. I've already ordered something off of Amazon to um, hold the projector. There'll be a nice table back here that the projector can sit on, nice and flat, much more stable than I have it now. That's stable, but it's just a nightstand that I pulled in for um, testing purposes and demos. So I'll be getting a full table there uh, to show that off. And then I was also able to get uh, a very long HDMI cord. So. I gotta uh, wrap that cable up and hide it better, but that's actually a 35 foot HDMI cord and it's running underneath my rug all the way back here into my receiver. So you don't even see the wires until you get over here. And I need to put something here to, to block that so you don't see all the ugliness, but it ran all the way to here. Um, and it's a really great HDMI cable. So I got this cable from a company called Fees Link. I uh, hadn't heard of them, but they're on Amazon. They have a five-year warranty. And I mean, this is an expensive cable. So I only got this because um, they were willing to let me try it out. A 35-foot HDMI cable is pretty expensive uh, unless you just get an Amazon Basics. But what this one has is it's really 4K capable. Um, it's, all, it's rated for all the uh, different 4K uh, standards, HDR, 4x4x4, 8-bit UHD, 4K, uh, it can output 4K at 60 hertz. Um, so that's that's really cool. I mean, that's what I need eventually for down the line. 
has gold plated, um, you know, ends to it. And uh, actually unique about this is that it has a source side and a display side. So you have to plug one side into your source, your um, receiver and the other end has to go in the display or it doesn't work. Um, but it was, it was pretty slim, nice and flexible. I was able to get it under this rug with no issue. Um, this is like a hundred dollars on Amazon. And I, I have to be honest here, I don't know how much better this would be than your typical HDMI. Um, I know this can obviously handle higher levels. It has a little bit higher bandwidth than some other ones you might get, but I don't know if it's worth $125, although a 35 foot cord, um, I got extra because I just wasn't sure. That was probably a lot more than I needed during setup. And so you'd be able to get a cheaper version of this that still has all these uh, updated capabilities. Now looking at this projector um, right from my seat, this is exactly uh, my view right here. So like I said, it looks really big in the room, but you're actually getting the full, you know, scope of the screen. I'm not having to look left and right. Like this is basically what my eyesight sees and I've got the full screen in my eyes, uh, my eyesight. So I, I don't see any issues. I think it looks nice and slim on the ceiling. Actually, in fact, if I uh, I have my remote here, if, and this is the cool thing, if I press up, there goes the screen. Um, and then I did keep the TV back there. So that's my 55 inch Samsung 4K TV. Um, that's gonna stay back there for now. I found that it's better to play games on, video games, the PlayStation. Uh, just the input lag on the projector didn't work so hot. And I'd like to have a native 4K display to do some comparisons between this and the projector. So I did keep it on the wall. And then the cool thing is that the projector screen just comes down right over it. You'd never even know it was there. And I do it all with the remote from my chair. It's really convenient. Now from the chair, um, as you can see, the projector is just gonna shoot right in between here onto the screen. Um, if I'm sitting here, I can actually fully recline. Uh, either of these, I have no issues. It looks like it would hit, but it actually doesn't when it reclines. I have no problem with that. And unless you're, you know, waving your hand in front of the projector or something, as long as I'm sitting back like this, I'm not in that field of view at all. And so I can sit here, watch a movie and have no issues. I mean, if I stand up to go leave the room, then, you know, I'll walk in front of the projector. But as long as you're sitting here watching a movie and I'm just chilling out, I, you know, my hands don't, my shoulder doesn't bump into this, none of this, you know, I'm, I'm completely clear as long as I'm not in front of this. Um, so that's really cool. And then real quick, I do want to show you guys this thing powered up because you actually haven't um, seen it yet. So let's turn that on. There goes the lens right there. And uh, I'll do some lens shifting with this to show you how that works uh, and, and how, how the whole thing comes together with zoom and lens shift and all the different capabilities this has. So like I said, just getting warmed up here, uh, the Epson 5050 UB, it warms up pretty quickly. It takes about, um, you know, 10 seconds before uh, you're able to see the logo really well. And then it'll ask for the source, which it's gonna do right now. Of course, I don't have anything on. So what I'm gonna do is just jump into the test menu and show you some of the features. So right here is the first lens feature. Um, this is the focus adjust. So, uh, you can mess around with that. You'll see it get better in the video and then get really bad. So you just have to play around with that, whatever works for your eyesight. The next thing is you have the zoom adjust. So I need to play around with this still, but you can zoom, um, you know, way, way out if you have a, a longer throw, or you can zoom all the way in to where I have it, um, which will give you the kind of full screen picture. So that zoom is, is pretty solid. You can really do a lot with that. Um, the next feature is the lens shift. So this is what's really cool. Look how far this thing can shift. So I'm going to go all the way down here. So imagine you had this up on the ceiling. Uh, you need to shift the image down. Like I'm, I'm on the floor, right? All the way, keep going, keep going. I can basically shoot this image completely on the floor and the projector has not moved. There's my image now. I can also send that back up. So the lens shift just has a lot of room to work with, uh, which, is, which is really cool. It's a really cool feature to have. Um, and I can get all the way back up to where I was and actually end up going completely onto the ceiling and 
almost get the entire picture on the ceiling. Um, so you get about half the picture on the ceiling. So, I mean, lens shift is just crazy. Um, you can already see here, I, I'm missing, I'm, I'm, I got a gap on the right, a little bit less on the left. I got to play around with the settings on this thing and get it so it's not just sitting on a, a side table because anytime I touch this, this gets thrown off. Um, so I still got some stuff to mess around with, but at the very least I can um, play around with the picture and, and watch a 4K video and see how the picture displays. And so just to give you a quick demo, obviously my phone camera might not do this justice, but this is in full light. I got the lights on, it's daylight outside, and look at this screen. I mean, the brightness levels are great. It looks incredible even in the daylight. Um, a little bit washed out here and there, uh, as you can see, but wait till you see this thing when I turn the lights off. So now that I've hit the lights, you can see already how much uh, better the black levels are. The washout kind of goes away. And this isn't even close to a completely dark room, but this picture looks incredible right now, especially with Planet Earth 2. So this is definitely going to be the demo disc um, that I go ahead and use to sort of calibrate my system. So that's pretty much it, guys. There's the projector. There's the new screen. I got lots of testing to do. I'm definitely gonna pop this guy in, uh, Planet Earth 2 and 4K. This will be a really good disc to check out, um, you know, the HDR levels on this projector and how the 4K resolution looks. This is one of the best 4K discs out there if you're looking for a demo piece. So I'm gonna mess around with this, um, you know, over the next coming days and then I'll have kind of a full review and comparison of the um, you know, the 4K shifting, not truly 4K, not native 4K projector with the pixel shift, you know, versus my Samsung. Uh, how does Planet Earth 2 look? Are you really getting, you know, good bang for your buck with this? Is it worth getting this versus a TV? There's a lot of factors to talk about. Just screen size alone, obviously, is a huge factor for some people. If you can get to 92 inches, you're not going to be able to buy a TV this big. Um, so we'll talk about all that in future videos, but I just wanted to give you a quick update where I was and, um, you know, I'll, I'll throw some video in here too. I'll uh, mix it up with the install and how that all went. Um, I'll throw that in here at the end so you can get an idea of it. But, um, other than that, that's about it for this video. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Again, thank you to Epson for providing the projector. Thank you to Elite Screens. They were great. They really helped me out. I called their support for help with the install. I had a few questions. I went back and forth with them about my throw distance, how big a screen I needed, what kind of screen I needed. Do I go with white, gray, um, acoustic? Um, you know, can the sound go through it or not? Like what kind of material do you need? There's all kinds of stuff that you can play around with here. So I highly recommend talking to companies like Elite Screen. Uh, and the motorized thing is great that I can just hit a remote button, put that back up, still be able to use the TV that's back there, um, and just sort of use this projector for movies, which is really what I wanted to use it for. Uh, Epson's also been really helpful with the whole setup, and so I'm looking forward to working closer with them as, as I do a review. Um, but as I said, I'll show you some highlights here at the end of the video of sort of just the quick install. I took a few videos. They don't really fit in with the flow of this, so I'm just going to throw them in at the end. Um, but if you like this sort of stuff, if you're excited about the projector, if you want to see more, I'll be doing 4K reviews with this. I have Alien 4K coming soon. I have a few more 4K discs I want to try out. Um, and I'll be doing more home theater type stuff, talking about um, calibrating and different settings. And, and if you're at all interested in any of that, um, definitely subscribe, like the video, and make sure you follow me on Instagram for updates. That's probably where you hear from me most often is on Instagram. And then if I'm doing a video, if I have a longer form type thing I want to talk about, I'll put it here on YouTube um, and, and do some updates there. But Instagram is a great place to get in touch, ask me questions, all that good stuff. But again, thank you to Elite Screens. This was really cool. This was super easy to set up once I called them. I'm telling you, this took me 15 minutes. All you need is a drill bit, a couple screws, and somebody to help you lift it up. I actually did it myself. If you're you know, tall enough to reach, um, I didn't even need a step stool. I just stuck it right up there, clipped right on easily. And the projector was a pretty easy calibration setup once I got it going. Just got to play with the colors now. So um, thanks to all the great partners I've been working with. And, uh, and thank you again to the, the company that supplied me the, uh, supplied me the HDMI. That was really helpful to have a long 4K capable cord. Um, so just lots of good stuff going on, guys. Hopefully there's more to come. So stay tuned for that, and I'll be back soon with some more videos.